Hey, it's David Heatley here, and I just wanted to talk to you about gear ratios. Now, I had this question asked to me, how do I work out my gear ratios? Why are some of my gears similar to other gears? So, to get into it, um, what I want to do is first show you the formula, and it's a gear inch uh, formula. I'm just going to uh, share my screen. All right, so the gear ratio formula is your front chain ring divided by your rear sprocket times 27. And the reason why we use 27 is that um, it's the standard that we've used for quite a long, uh, quite quite a few number of years, and um, obviously we ride on 700C uh, nowadays. But the the issue is that when you're talking to gear ratios with um, with uh, people uh, that ride bikes, especially when we're down on the track in the velodrome, we always talk about gear ratio inches. So so that's the standard that we use. And what I'll do is I just go to a gear ratio chart. So this is a chart that um, that I created a few years ago. And uh, you notice it only goes down to 30. Uh, in you know a few years ago, 30 wasn't as common. People were riding generally 52 um, uh, or 53, 39s was really the common thing. And with, with the advent of uh, semi-compact and compact crank sets um, and uh, bigger cassettes for road uh, road bikes, we're seeing uh, differences in gear ratios. So, so let's go through and explain how this works. So if we see 11 is usually the smallest cog that you can get on your rear cassette and this is uh, the uh, chain ring. So we've got, you know, it goes up to 50, 54 and goes down to 24. Now uh, 53 is here, so that's 53 and with all those gear ratios. So a 53 11 will give you a 103 inch gear. Okay, And um, we'll see actually when people talk about running out of gears on a on a compact crank set, we'll just go to a compact crank set and look what the gear ratio is on a compact crank set. So the largest chain ring on a compact crank set is 50, which gives you a 122 inch as opposed to a 130 inch gear. Now the interesting thing is that if you have a standard crank set 53, uh, 39, there's 39 there, all right, and you compare it to a compact crank set which is a 50, 34. You'll see that the top gear for, um, say, a 5312 is 119 inches. Now, if you go to a compact crank set and put uh, an 11 on your bike, which is a 5011, it's 122. So you'll see that a, a 5011 is a bigger gear than a 5212. All right. So uh, if you're running um, a 50, 53, sorry, 5312. Uh, you'll, uh, and you go to a compact crank set and you put on uh, a 5011, you actually have a bigger gear on your bike as your top gear. All right. Now let's look at the bottom range of the gearing. So uh, if we go to uh, 50, 30, uh, what is it, 39 for a compact crank set, where's 39? Here it is here. And we look at, uh, say, 28, which is, you know, uh, 28's down through here, is here it is. So that's a lower gear, so that's 37, 37.6 uh, inches, or where we usually round it out, and that'd be 37, 38, because we'd round it up, because it's 0 0.6, so be around 38 inches. Now if we look at a compact crank set that gives you um, a 34, you'll see that the number here is 32.8, so uh, 33 inches. Now you notice that there's not much of a difference between those two gears, but um, enough to make a difference. And what happens is that with these gears, you'll find that uh, towards the upper end, the changes between one gear and another is quite big. The change between one tooth and another, if we look at uh, 53, we'll see uh, 119 uh, and 130 here. All right, so big difference in number of teeth. But when we go down to this range here, we see the difference between one tooth and another tooth uh, is a lot less. All right, so just understand that that as you get lower on your cassette, you need more teeth to make a substantial difference in your gear inch. All right. So now the other thing that I wanted to uh, cover off in this is that sometimes you get overlaps in your gears. So if we look at say so standard crank set 53, and we look at some of the gears down here, uh, if we've got a cassette that goes from 28 uh, through to 11. Obviously, we don't have all of these gears here, but you will see that um, if we're on the big chain ring, we'll see that uh, the the big on big big chain ring big sprocket at the back. If we're running a 28, the lowest gear we've got is 51. If we look at um, 39, here's 39 here, 
and we look at uh, the gear ratios uh, on that uh, chain ring that we get, we start off with 37 and we go up to, you know, on the 11th sprocket, 95 inches. So you'll see that there's actually quite a bit of overlap in those gears, all right? So um, you'll see that when you're on the big chain ring, on the big sprocket, uh, on a 28, you're at 51 inch gear. And you'll see that um, that's equivalent, here's 52, it's equivalent to sitting in your low chain ring on a 20, uh, 52. So that overlap uh, is important because what it means is that, you know, some people feel a bit ripped off, you know, they've got a, a bike that's got um, 11 speeds, so they've got 22 gears, and some of the gears are similar on the lower chain ring as they are on the big chain ring. But the great thing about that is that when you're on the big chain ring, when you're riding fast along the flat uh, and riding downhill, then you're in the big chain ring. And you've got this selection of gears that you can ride along. All right, now when you're in a small chain ring, again, you've got, you know, you usually use a small chain ring for riding up hills, uh, riding into headwinds. Um, so, you know, when you get into a small chain ring, you've got this range of gears. And it means that you don't have to switch from the big chain ring to the little chain ring or the little chain ring to the big chain ring to select, you know, gears. Um, uh, to in a sequence like a car, so it means that you're not having to change from little chain ring to big chain ring all the time when you're just race basically riding in this range of gears for a particular type of terrain, so um, you know, uphill or into headwinds, and then you're riding on this range on flat roads and uh, in tailwinds and um, and downhills. So, so I just wanted to explain that to you. Look, let me know if you've got any questions. It's been David Heatley here from Cycling Inform.